So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and it's been almost two years since I've driven the 2017 Award 595 manual. So what I have here today is probably what I've been wanting to tour all of these years too. This is the Award 595 Competizione and this one is the automatic version. So I'd like to thank everyone here at ACH Motors here near Circuit Makati to Sir Martin and to Sir Dennis for making these reviews possible. And there'll be a lot more I'll be shooting here, but I, of course, I could not help myself in shooting this first because you all know me, Amana Bart slash Alfa Romeo Soccer. So being the competition very well, this face looks almost exactly the same apart from few more trims here on the bumper. This one has somewhat carbon fiber or I think this is just a wrap but anyways and a big upgrade too from the older one, the ones I've driven. You have now LED lights all around including your fog lamps too. So here on the side profile, it's as cute as ever and I love all of the decals here. Now, since now this being the competition event and here, biggest eye-catching difference here, you, you have 17 inch wheels then these are running on Michelin Pilot Sport 3 tires and two, these have Brembo brakes all around. The Abarth 595 manual that I've driven is not equipped with those. So two big uh, upgrade too with this competition. Eh? Well, the engine is pretty much the same. However, this is the most powerful variant of the 595 that you can get. Powering this is still the same 1.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 180 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. And like what I said earlier too, this one is mated to a five-speed automated manual transmission, aka a single clutch transmission. Everything is so compact here in the engine base, so that's as well to keep everything as light as possible. That's what I praise too a lot for in the older 595 manual. On the side profile too, since being now the hotter version of the Fiat 500, you get 595 badges and the Abarth badge itself. Here overall at the rear, apologies, I mean, uh, I'm somewhere here in the main road. Here overall at the rear, it's one of my favorite. It's very cute, it's very wide. Since as well being the comp variant, you get a little bit of uh, bumperettes here for improved aerodynamics. And now you get competition badges here now since being this the top of the line model. Very large Abarth badge here. And you can see even the 500 uh, model designation here on the uh, boot tailgate itself but before that unlike now with the 595 mano that I've given you get quad exhaust pipes all around and this sounds pretty menacing for a very small car Now open the boot up. One of my biggest nitpicks too with the 595, but I don't mind it whatsoever. This is your boot space. This is around less than uh, 200 liters, and then you, at least you can fold all of the seats down too. But this is one of the more smaller uh, boot spaces in this class of vehicle, and you can somewhat still sit in here if you want. But I think it's just best for two people, and still at least you can. Oh, you can even put this out a uh, full size umbrella, so you have to tilt it in order to get it out. I think this is even the original uh, Abart umbrella. And as well, special thanks to Abart Alfa Romeo Petamax Enterprise. This was the exact unit that was from the original Green Hills branch, which I did the review of, as I said, the Abart 595. Now they are located at Alfa Romeo Libis, which I did a review of the Alfa Romeo Julia Sprint, the GTA M, and the, more recently the Stelvia. And hopefully soon we will dive this one and more, more Alfa Romeo soon. Now this is the interior of the 595 Competizione and like before, this is your key Then once you start it up, I really love this animation Of course you have your instrument cluster and the infotainment system Once you open it, it even opens the garage to your about 595 which is the same color that I've driven to So as well as you saw there, you have Beats Audio all around this vehicle which is Amazing. I mean, I've tried that out too before even though that was just the base model. It is equipped with such feature So here in the door card. Yes, there's a lot of plastics here there But I don't mind it and then you get fabric soft touches for your elbow Steering wheel. This is the big difference now being the top of the line model You get carbon fiber trims around for your buttons. They're both for your phone connectivities on either side But your volume adjustments here on the left side the instrument cluster adjustments here on the right side and your instrument cluster itself Pretty much the same as before and once you press the sport mode here on the middle now it changes to the very crazy mode That was the mode I would kept using during the 595 land out too and my favorite part here in the instrument cluster 
to you get a turbo gauge spool here on the left side. It was pretty hilarious that I always kept maximizing the turbo pressure. So anyways, back to this thing. There's a lot more carbon fiber and Alcantara material. And as you can hear, the exhaust is pretty loud. This sounds way better than that of the uh, 595 manual. However though, this is a tuned one and the 595 base is a, sounds still pretty good. And I gotta be honest, this four cylinder is among one of the best sounding ones on the market you can buy today. So if you want to check out more prices about the 595 or even the this 595 competition, check out about Alfa Romeo Libis. They're actually selling pretty well. That's why I can't even do a walk around tour over there. But at least there was one here at ACH Motors. So in, in your infotainment system, this was absent in the uh, 595 manual. You only get for your speaker, but I think this is equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Just correct myself here on the screen. You can do a lot of stuff here. And I got to be honest, the layout looks very similar like that of uh, Dodge vehicles. Well, since again, Abarth's under the FCA Stellantis uh, family too. So further down below, you get your sport button and your fog leg buttons. And way further down, pretty much the same, you get your climate control functions. Thank goodness, they're all f still physical. And this is now the biggest difference now. Since this now being the five speed AMT transmission, you get paddle shifters all around. I mean, yes, they're plastic, but at least your plus minus, there's like red indications over here on top. And you don't get a gear shift anymore. These are all buttons now. And on either side, this is how you put down the windows, but I won't put it down. I think this is just uh, newly tinted. Further down below, you get a 12 volt socket, cubby space, two cup holders, USB port, and a manual handbrake. So what I did before in my land out review, you only can fit uh, small bottles and cups just down there below. And on the right side of the dashboard, you still get the Fiat 500 badges over here and then glove box. Okay, pretty shallow, but it goes all the way inside. Pretty common for this class of European vehicles. And biggest change now, you get a Bart Sport bucket seats. These were absent in the 595 manual. How This is way more sportier than usual. But it's still, I think it's still pretty much as comfortable as the regular seats of the manual transmission variant. So above here, halogen lights, sun visor, ticket clip holder, the vanity mirror is only available on the right side don't extend sadly but that was given in all the Abarth models anyway so rear seats yes you only can fit strictly two people there in the back space for me I'm 5'4 by the way it's not so bad I demoed it perfectly in the 595 manual it is exactly the same so again with I don't mind sitting there in the back because it's still uh, comfortable to say the least because those are not uh, sport bucket seats so yeah, that's a quick walk around tour of this Abarth 59 competition. So I'd like to thank everyone here again, right here at ACH Motors, to Sir Dennis and to Sir Martin for making this walk around review possible. Hopefully soon, we'll get to dive one of these in the future. I'm not sure if this will be the exact one I'll be diving or another one. Anyways, so if you want me to check out more European or crazy sports car like this one, let me know in the comments down below. So hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews and more crazy cars that I will feature on my channel. Bye-bye.